In this video, we will show you how to correctly install and commission the Enector AC 3.711 wall box from Coastal. Please note the information relating to installation and proper use of the device. Along with the wall box, the scope of delivery also includes the following accessories. A quick start guide, a drilling template, accompanying documents, a test certificate, a circuit diagram, and a bag containing fastening material, including four long screws with screw anchors and the relevant sealing plugs for wall mounting, as well as four short cover screws and six membrane cable glands. The wall box's type plate includes the serial number, technical details, and warnings. You will find the type plate on the bottom left side of the device. The wall box comprises a housing cover and a lower part of housing. The LED display is located on the front of the housing cover. The wall box is designed so that the charging cable can be hung on the housing itself. There are cable openings at the top and bottom of the lower part of the housing, as well as on the rear, and you are free to select the most appropriate ones. The connection panel can be found in the center of the bottom half of the housing. The control unit is located on the inner surface of the housing cover. The DIP switches used to configure the wall box operating mode can be found on the left of the control unit. Please note that the instructions are written assuming that you are looking at the DIP switches once opened. Find a suitable location for the wall box. It is intended for wall mounting. If installing the wall box outdoors, please ensure that it is protected from the weather, such as direct sunlight, rain, leaves, and snow. The wall box can be fastened to wooden and stone walls. We would recommend installing at eye level at 1.5 meters. Make sure that the wall box is out of reach of children. De-energize the housing grid or installation area before starting to mount the wall box. When positioning, factor in a space 300 millimeters wide all the way around the wall box. This space is needed later on in the installation process to wind up the charging cable. Use the template provided, which you will find in the packaging, to draw four holes on the wall. Drill holes 6 mm in diameter in the wall. Use a suitable tool to cut or drill the cable guide needed in the wall box. You will find cable openings on the rear, bottom, and top. Place the base of the wall box on a solid mounting surface and guide the AC cable through the corresponding opening. Use the fastening material provided. To prevent rainwater from entering, the hole in the membrane should not be any larger than the cables. The electronic components may experience subsequent damage. Strip the supply cable. 10 millimeters of insulation is stripped from the wires, then exposed. For three-phase operation, connect the brown wire to L1, the black to L2, the gray to L3, the blue to N, and the yellow to PE. For single-phase operation, connect the brown wire to L1, the blue to N, and the yellow to PE. Connection points L2 and L3 are not needed. Note the technical data in your operating manual for connecting the terminal strip. The supply cable must be protected using a Type A residual current device of 30 milliamps and an MCB line circuit breaker of max 20 amps. Make sure the supply cable diameter is large enough. The wall box does not have a push button for switching between charge modes as standard. However, a push button with the following requirements can be connected to the terminal block as an option. A 22 mm vandalism protected push button with sealing ring. Follow the instructions in your operating manual to connect this. Cut or drill the opening required in the wall box. Fit the push button at the bottom of the housing. Strip 10 mm of insulation off the cable. Connect the cables to the push button and terminal following the inscriptions on the terminal. In some countries, automatic AC shutdown is required in the event of a fault. For this, the wall box allows connection of a shunt release fitted in the house connection box. To do this, route a cable between your wall box and the shunt release. Cut or drill the cable inlet required in the wall box. Appropriate membrane cable glands are included in the scope of delivery. For a cable inlet on the top or bottom, use membrane cable glands with strain relief. For a cable inlet on the rear, use membrane cable glands without strain relief. 
Strip the cable and strip 10 millimeters of insulation off the wires. Connect the cable to the wall box's terminal following the inscriptions on the terminal. Then connect the cable to the shunt release. In order to connect the Coastal Smart Energy Meter, the energy meter is installed at the grid connection point in the house network. To do this, route the communication cable between the wall box and energy meter. Cut or drill the cable inlet required in the wall box. Insert the appropriate membrane cable entry into the respective cable inlet on the rear, bottom, or top. If inserting at the top or bottom, use strain relief. When inserting on the rear, use a membrane cable gland without strain relief. Guide the cables into the wall box. Strip the cable. Strip 10 millimeters of insulation off the wires. Connect the communication cable to the wall box's terminal following the inscriptions on the terminal. Then connect the communication cable to the energy meter. The wall box runs in various operating modes. There are two 8-pole DIP switches in the upper part of the housing with which the wall box can be configured. The configuration must be determined depending on the use. Refer to the operating manual for the specific configuration options. The switches in the two banks 1 and 2 must be set accordingly for configuration. We would recommend installing a Coastal Smart Energy Meter, or KSEM, with convenience function. Switches 4, 5, 6, and 7 in Bank 1 are set to ON. A chargeable inector activation code is needed for the Coastal Smart Energy Meter. This can be obtained from the online shop. Switches 1, 2, 3, and 8 in Bank 1 remain OFF. Should there be no Coastal Smart Energy Meter fitted, all switches in Bank 1 are set to OFF. The switches in Bank 2 should be set depending on the house connection fuse and the charging current. Observe the information provided in your operating manual. Before closing the wall box, check whether all screws on the terminal strip's connection points are tight enough. Close the wall box and screw the bottom of the housing to the top of the housing using the fastening material provided. Before switching on the wall box, note the following information. Danger. Risk of death due to electric shock and discharge. If a damaged device is used, people may be seriously injured or killed by electric shock. Note. When commissioning for the first time, carry out an inspection of the device in accordance with IEC 60364-6 and the corresponding valid national regulations, for example, DIN VDE 0100-600 in Germany. The inspection can be carried out in conjunction with a test box and a test device for standard compliant testing. The test box simulates vehicle communication. Test boxes are commercially available. 1. Switch on residual current device. 2. Switch on line circuit breaker. 3. Wall box powers up. Standby LED on the LED display lights up. Once the wall box has been switched on, your wall box is now properly mounted and ready for use. If you are using a Coastal Smart Energy Meter in combination with the wall box and the optional convenience functions, the wall box still has to be set up in the Coastal Smart Energy Meter. To set up the inector wall box in the Coastal Smart Energy Meter, the DIP switches must be set accordingly. Setting up the wall box with convenience functions in the KSEM provides a wide range of additional options. With a PV system, functions such as Solar Pure Mode or Solar Plus Mode are possible. These can be selected as a function via the Coastal Smart Energy Meter interface or using the Coastal Solar app. An activation code is needed to set up the wall box in the Coastal Smart Energy Meter. The activation code can be purchased from the Coastal Solar online shop. As soon as the wall box function has been activated by entering the activation code, you will see the new wall box menu. Go to Modbus Settings. The RS-485 interface to which wall box communication is connected must be deactivated. Only in the next step can the wall box be assigned to an RS-485 interface in the wall box menu. Go to Modbus Settings. Under Modbus RTU, deactivate the RS-485 interface, for example, the RS-485B interface to which wall box communication is connected. Then press the Save button to save your settings and adopt them. Within the wall box menu, 
You can use the Add button or the gear wheel to the right of it to add a new wall box. Give the wall box a name. We recommend calling it Inector AC 3.7 slash 11. Select the previously released RS-485 interface, for example, RS-485B as the interface. Then, slave address remains set to 50. Then click on OK to confirm your entries. You can check the setup status of the wall box by clicking on the gear wheel in the top right. You can see the charging device in the charge process status. Then the wall box is completely ready for use. You can activate the Coastal Solar Portal by going to Solar Portal. This ensures that data is transferred from the wall box to the Coastal Smart Energy Meter. Make sure that the right time and time zone are selected in the KSEM under Device Settings. Use the 10-digit activation code to activate the convenience functions. The suitable charging mode can also be conveniently selected in the local WLAN network using the Coastal Solar app or the integrated KSEM web server. You can choose from the following different charging modes. Lock mode, power mode, solar pure mode, and solar plus mode. In lock mode, the wall box is locked. When in this mode, the wall box can no longer be used and is protected against third-party intervention. You can release the wall box again by selecting a different mode in the Coastal Solar app or via the Coastal Energy Meters online interface. The four charging mode options that you can choose from provide the following four functions. Lock mode, prohibit third-party use. Power mode, full power, fast charging. Solar pure mode, just self-generated solar electricity. Solar plus mode, Variable Initial Output Specification with Shares of Green Self-Generated Electricity For a detailed explanation of the charging modes, please watch one of the videos provided on our channel. Costal hopes that your new Inector AC wall box brings you great joy. Should you require more detailed information, please consult the Operating Manual or contact Costal's Technical Customer Support.